Hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for watching. I got a great interview for you today. I, I have my friend Matt Garabini in here with me. How are you doing today, Matt? Good, Michael. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. So I've known uh, Matt and his family for quite some time, as you'll hear in the story. Uh, his family's been, been in the real estate business for quite a while in the Fresno market, so, so worked with, with them uh, over the last couple of decades, but really been working with Matt here the last 18 months or so. Uh, and it's been a great experience. So, Matt, why don't you just give us a feel for the audience for what, what you're doing in your business today and, and, and what's going on? Sure. Thanks again for having me on. It's a pleasure to speak with you. And uh, it's always a treat to get to talk to you and talk <laughs> about real estate. I, I, by the way, I've been watching all of your YouTube videos and I, I, I share them and I, I tell my team, look, Michael knows the market cycle. So we need to start communicating this to our sellers, letting awesome. them know the party's over. Yeah. Just want to and you're doing a great job. And I, again, you know, kudos to you on that. I appreciate uh, that. But to answer your question, you know, I've been a, a real estate professional since 2009 um, is when I, you know, got into the, into the real estate business. Prior to that, <clears throat> I had uh, my first introduction into the real estate. Uh, I don't know, I guess you would say the real estate business on the, on the, on the lending side. So mm. um, I, I started understanding uh, wholesaling subprime mortgages. Ah. So, you know, Shaw, you know, yep. at that time, uh, 2005, six and seven was like every other um, business was a mortgage broker. Yes. So, you know, um, I get into this wholesale uh, mortgage. I don't even know what a mortgage is, right. you know, uh, but I, I understand you can make a lot of money. Yeah. So I get in there and I'm, I'm out there with my, uh, my uh, hiring manager. He's in Bakersfield. He comes up for the day. He's like, we're going to these shops. He's like, all right, pull me, let me see the, let me see the 1003. Let me see the, the credit report. Let me, you know, what's the DTI? What's the LTV? You know, how many trade lines? I mean, he, I'm like, he's talking foreign language <laughs> and he's like signing stuff and looking. He's like, Hey, we'll submit these docs. And, and I walk out of there. He's like, Oh man. He's like, we just made a bunch of money. And I'm like, we did. Yeah. He's like, I'm like, cool. And yeah. so like for the first six months, I didn't know what I was doing, you know, yeah. but my company was called accredited home lenders. Yeah. And they were at the time, like they would do the toxic, toxic stuff. Right. So, you know, the stuff that like everyone, like at that time was getting a loan. It seemed like if you had a heartbeat, mm -hmm. um, these guys would do the stuff that if you can imagine that people didn't want to do. Wow. Even in that aggressive market. So I kind of started understanding how the lending world works and what an LTV was, mm -hmm. you know, what a DTI is, um, you know, how, how, how people get um, um, accepted to get pre-approved and actually, you know, funding. So, you know, once those doors closed because the market crashed, then I got mm -hmm. my, uh, my broker's license. I went straight yep. to being a broker. Mm -hmm. I never had any experience as an agent. And, um, you know, I, I kind of tried everything in the real estate space. You know, I did, um, residential, I, I, you know, took people around and showed them properties. I, um, I did, uh, some commercial stuff. I did leasing, I did, um, apartments and where I kind of found my niche was, um, working with, you know, guys like yourself who were investor minded, um, it, they didn't really care about what color, you know, the paint on the wall were, <laughs> yeah. you know, it was, you know, pretty, it was like, well, what's my return? What's the yeah. cap rate? How can I, can I increase, uh, rents and lower expenses? And so that kind of, I, I like talking that. And so mm -hmm. I, I gravitated towards those investors like yourself and pitched them, you know, income properties, yeah. multifamily deals. And so I kind of got my little niche going in that. And, you know, subsequently I was selling a lot of those apartments and, um, I started saying I'd manage them, Yeah, you know, <laughs> because I wanted to supplement my income. Sure, you know? sure. And, uh, you know, my, my grandfather told me he was a broker. He's like, you got to get your broker's license. It's a license to make money. Yeah. And yeah. it made a lot of sense to me. And he's like, but you also, if you can pick up some management in between, um, you know, you're, you're going to get some residual income and sure. you know, uh, you've got some checks coming in, in between your more in, in between your escrows. And I'm like, yeah. it made a lot of sense. So like organically without even really knowing what I was doing, like I built my management business up and you know, I, 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 I built it because I was, you know, very responsive to my investors. I'd go pick up their rents. I would handle the problems. Yeah. 
I would make sure everything was running smoothly because it mattered a lot to me. And my whole pitch was, you know, keep buying more because I'm going to take care of them like they're my own. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, so I kept growing that side of the business, but then I, I, I started like looking at deals and seeing, you know, I was bringing these opportunities and my guys were, were buying them. I was making a little bit of money, but you know, I, I quickly figured out I'm never going to get to where I, I want to go right. by, by being a broker. Um, you know, especially I, I know Jason, I listened to Jason Pritchard's uh, interview and he, he said a lot of the same things that, you know, I, I figured out as well. Yeah. Um, you know, in our market, as you know, you've got to do um, millions and millions and millions of dollars of, of volume on the brokerage side um, to even get ahead. And sure. I just didn't see that as re realistic. Yeah. Uh, and I wanted to become an, an investor, you know, and I didn't have the resources. I didn't, I didn't come from money. I didn't come from, um, you know, uh, a trust fund or anything <laughs> like that. So I, I, uh, I invested in, um, some, uh, uh courses. Yep. I was, I was at a, a local commercial real estate company, um, at the time and, uh, still doing my apartment stuff. And, you know, one of the brokers in there, he was, you know, 30 years in the business. And yeah. at the time he, you know, I'd walk in there and he would just be like all frustrated. Like, <laughs> head. I'm like, what's wrong? He's yeah. like, he's like, just take my advice. When this business is good, it's great. When it's bad, it's terrible. And at the time, you know, we're talking 2009, 2000, no one was touching. There was no development. Commercial yeah. was in the tank. Everyone was, you know, like very reluctant to even lease any space. There was no business. I mean, it was just, it was yeah. tough. Yeah, yeah. And he's like, I just got to find a different way to make money. I can't do this anymore. I can't handle the yo-yo. Right. You know, my life is a yo-yo, you know, I'll go for two or three years and have a great, you know, income. And then the next two or three years, it's stressful. It's painful. I don't know where my next deal is coming from. It's inconsistent. I just, and he's like, I've been researching online and you, you know, you know, you could buy houses for nothing down. And, and there's this thing called wholesaling. I'm like, Oh yeah. Well like, what, what is it about? And so we would like literally meet up in his office and we would just watch these videos and, and learn about these techniques and see these guys with these checks. <laughs> You know, like, you know, and he's like, this is, this is BS, man. Like I have 30 years experience and these guys are making these big checks and it seems like the, they just got out of high school. I'm like, I don't know, man. Like, I don't know what's going on. So we eventually got turned on to this um, company called the fortune builders. I don't yeah. know if you've heard of them. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. those are Fresno guys, actually fan Merrill, JD and Paul Sage are all like Fresno high grads. They've built this amazing education company. At the time, they were coming from Connecticut. They just moved to San Diego to start, you know, opening that market and, and growing the fortune builders empire that it is today. Sure. So we got in at a very, like, attractive introductory price. Yeah, you know, myself and my partner that I mentioned, I think we bought into their mastery program at the time for like 12 grand. Mm -hmm. And it was like six grand each. Mm -hmm. And uh, six grand at the time, like, I didn't have that. Right. You know, and I, I went to my wife and I'm like, listen, you know, I have this great opportunity and, you know, it's six grand and I can learn all this great, you yeah. know, strategies. She's like, what do you need to, you're already a broker. Like, why do yeah. you need to pay someone out? <laughs> I'm like, no, you don't understand. Like, this is different, you know? And she was like, oh, I don't know. Like, you know, it hasn't been very easy. And, right. you know, she was right. Like, uh, it was a struggle for us, you know? And, um, I'm like, I don't know. I something about it. I just get it. I want to understand it more. And I really think I could do it. And, you know, you know, we talked about having a supportive, uh, yeah. uh, spouse and she's been awesome. She's been great. And, yeah. you know, she was a little bit reluctant, but then I, I kind of convinced her that I would, I really like want to do this. And she's yeah. like, okay, go for it. Well, yeah. And, I mean, you, you can't have yeah. blind faith, right? You have to have the discussion yeah. and the communications. Right. And then, and right. then, like you said, you know, she gets behind you and goes, okay, honey, I got, I got your back. That's, that's awesome. Right. Exactly. And it would be really cool to tell you that like I, I pulled the trigger and then all of a sudden I started just killing it. Yeah. It's not the truth. No, it's not the truth. <laughs> the the yeah. truth is, you know, I, I kind of dived into the, the material and I, 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 I was kind of wrapping my head around it, but you know, as anyone goes and you're, you're a testament to this, like, it, it's hard to get out of that what you what your your comfort zone sure people like 
you, I mean, you got a paycheck, right? right. Like, you, showed up, you worked, you got a paycheck. For me, it was like, well, I know that I could focus on, you know, selling apartments and doing my management and I'm going to get paid by doing that. You know, going over here and like committing to this was too scary because there's no guarantee that I could even make that work. I don't even know if it was real. All right. So I, you know, I kind of shelved it and I just went back to what I knew best. You yeah. know, selling apartments, picking up management accounts and just working like a dog. Right. And, yeah. you know, I, I, but at the back of my mind, I just knew like I was fooling myself. Like I'm never going to get ahead doing this financially. It was, it was stressful. Um, you know, I, I had gone through a, a foreclosure. Um, yeah. I had my, my, my car impounded. I think I had, and I have like, I kept my bank statements and stuff. I think I had like eight or $900 to my name when I got married. Um, so it was, it was crazy stressful. Yeah. Um, and, but you know, I, I stayed the course and I, I just kept diving in back into the material. Yeah. Make a long story longer. <laughs> I just said one night, you know, I'm on the Facebook chat rooms and I'm looking at these wholesaling houses, full-time guys, and everyone's posting these checks. I'm like, you know what, Matt, this is ridiculous. Like you have so much knowledge yeah. and you're just not applying it. These guys are just doing it. Yeah. You know, we talked about this before, Michael, right? You know, I like to say I'm ready, fire, aim. Yes. I've stolen that phrase. Yes. I like yeah, that one. Yeah, it makes sense to me. Right. Like, but I wasn't living that. I was like, I want to ready. I want to aim it. I want to, you know, I want to get that scope perfect. I want to line up my target. I want to, you know, measure twice, cut once, like yeah. all these things that like really don't translate into action until yeah. you finally get to your breaking point. Yeah, I totally and get it. Yeah. Your, I, your, your story is, we got a lot to unpack there. So thank you. So first yeah. and foremost of, of the people that I interview and I speak with you, your background is almost a Swiss army knife, right? You started, you know, back in, uh, when it was easy to get lending and you were, you were doing lending. So you have that kind of in your bag of tricks, right? You have experience with commercial or apartments and you have experience as a property manager, you're a broker. And, you know, you sort of, all of those are just jobs, right? They're, right. they're, they're jobs that, you know, maybe they have some structure to when you get paid. Um, you know, like property management maybe is monthly, but you know, the broker comes in when stuff closes, lending comes in when stuff closes. Um, it's, it's just another form of a job and where you're going with your story and why I wanted to stop here and then we can go forward is you have found a way after years of struggle to sort of put that behind you. Is that, is that kind of fair to say? Um, yes and no. Because okay. I think if you grow, there's new struggles. Like, sure. I don't think the struggle ever ends. I mean, it's not so much like where am I, where's my next paycheck? But right. I, but as you grow and, and now I'm a business owner, Yep. that's a whole different ball of wax. Oh, like I'm, I'm in the middle of that right now in terms of what it means to be a business owner. We could talk about that. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, now. Now, yeah. Now when you sort of look at your empire you're not sort of relying only on your efforts right now you have yeah. a team you have processes and procedures you know person a is doing this and person b is doing that and and you're kind of the i don't know if you want to call it the puppet master or the person leading the orchestra but yeah that yeah. brings its own challenges for sure absolutely yeah and, and and the biggest lesson that i've learned is uh, my team is a reflection of me oh no question uh, you know what I mean? And so I had my own personal uh, health challenges this year. I wasn't feeling good. Um, you know, I, I talked to you earlier this year on my podcast. I, everything was going great. And I woke up one morning and I was like, I don't want to do this anymore. I don't feel mm -hmm. good. Okay. You know, I don't, yeah. you know, my, the stress level is too high. I get caught up. I'm a, I'm a, a very um, a competitive individual. Sure. And, you know, I look at sometimes where I want to be and, and, and not give enough credit to where I've, uh, um, attained. Yeah. And I'm my wor own worst critic. And oh. so I, it wears on me quite a bit. You know, I get, I get down, I get frustrated and then I just shut off. Right. And so I think I took, you know, a good, I think I took like the second quarter off this year Yeah. and just checking out mentally, like showing up to the office and just sitting in here and like whatever the guys were doing, okay, like, yeah, you know, and, and it, 
and and it uh it really affect it affect obviously it affected my my business yeah of course and and and, and my guys were like kind of mirroring my energy you yeah. know and it took me a while to kind of snap out of it and and be like okay wait a second like i have to re-engage here right um, i need to figure out what what's going on why i'm feeling this way and you know i, I think i did and and i've i've you know from the third quarter till here kind of picked it back up and no question to take, you know responsibility again but yeah that was a lesson i mean i just felt like oh i'm a business owner you know the guys are going to do the work they're going to get the deals done i'll pop in every now and then and and be semi-engaged and we'll grow well <laughs> that wasn't the case no you no know, no not at all not the case at all and so you know now i'm now i'm learning to you know kind of harness my personal mm -hmm. uh, feelings, regardless if they're personal or their business, how I'm feeling about a certain thing, where I want the company, my vision, my yeah. energy, like it's just, it's a lot of different things that I've, I'm learning, you know? Yeah. This, and, you know, whether you're starting, you're in this, you've been in a long time. I got to tell you when you, you know, I had a similar struggle. I've, I've, I've shared this with lots of people. Um, you know, like you, I'm a competitive individual and, you know, you, you get to some goal that was out there for some time. And, and at least for me, and it sounds like for you, we sort of got there. We're like, there's not this next thing. And we kind of, it just kind of messes with our heads. Oh, hundred percent. It's uh, I call it, and I've, I've been told this, I didn't come up with this, but um, it's like that it's called the imposter theory. Ah, because, okay. Uh, we, we, we actually are very successful in what we do, but since we're our biggest critic, like we kind of turn inwards and say, I don't deserve this. Yeah. I didn't, I'm not that special. I didn't do that much to be in this position. So therefore, um, you know, a lot of people say, well, you know, I'm great at putting out fires. I put out fires all day Yeah. Where people say that. Yeah. And the truth is that we're the arsonists. Yeah, exactly. You know, <laughs> you know as an entrepreneur, like we, we're, we're great at screwing things up. Yeah. You know what I mean? And yeah. When it becomes like easy, we want to screw things up because we don't, we don't have enough um, trust and 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 self. Uh, the word I'm looking for, like you know, just appreciation. There you go. Yeah. You're like I deserve this. You yeah. know, I, it's okay. Like I've built this, right. and so you know, that's the never-ending quest of what's enough. Yeah, exactly, right. Exactly. And, and so it's it's interesting, and I, I've learned a lot about that psychological side of of the you know the entrepreneur and and what we have to shoulder and the burden and yeah. what we carry every day so it's, yeah. it's interesting very cool so one thing i want to make sure we touch on just given your unique background is um you know i have a lot of people i speak with that are interested in getting into we'll call it apartments for lack of a better term instead of just yeah. commercial commercials too big a term so multifamily apartments you know what does um you know, when you're talking to an investor, because as a broker, as a salesperson, one of the things you can't do is you have, can't have people waste your time. Right. Right? So how do you uncover or how do you talk to people to sort of uncover if they're seriously looking versus, hey, I went to some class or I saw something online and, you know, they're going to waste, waste your time. What is a good investor question or how do you know somebody's serious? Do you have any thoughts on that? Uh. Yeah. I mean, uh, number one, I mean, this is kind of logical, but do you have the money right now? There you go. Uh, you yeah. know, uh, a lot of people want to say that they're interested and want to buy apartments and then they don't have or understand, um, the requirements to, to get a, to get a loan. I right. mean, all the property will be assessed based on the cash flow and what it performs on the debt service and all that. Yeah. You still have to come up with a down payment. Yep. Uh, now there's ways to structure that if you want to bring in equity partners and stuff, but that gets a little bit more advanced. Right. Um, so the, you know, the first question is, I mean, do you have the money and, and, and what's your experience level? Right. Like if a guy wants to go from, you know, I have a duplex, you know, and I want to buy a 20 unit complex, I'm probably going to have that conversation right. of what his expectations are. Um, do you know how to, um, do you understand that, um, what, what the true, uh, expense is on a, on a complex, right. I, I have the advantage of actually managing other people's and owning multifamily. Yeah. So whenever someone says, yeah, you know, we're, we're going to run the expenses at like 25 or 30%. <laughs> <I'm> like, <laughs> yeah, uh, no, you're about 20% short. 
<laughs> yeah. So I, I try to help them understand like what's on paper is not reality. Yeah. So when you're buying a 10 cap, you're actually probably going to end at an eight, oh, you yeah, know, at the end sure. of the day. So yeah. when you're buying an eight, you're buying a six in yeah. reality. Yeah. Um, you know, especially if you don't have, you know, very good vendor relationships or understand where your hidden costs are, exactly. you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, hidden costs being the, the vacancy and the turnover, you know, you know, you know, Michael, like oh. you turn over, it, yeah. it could burn through your profit. Absolutely. You do four or five of them in a year. It's You're done. That yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah, and so I can tell you the thing that, cause again, I get that question all the time. And if the conversation goes this way, I know there's a red flag and it goes something like this. Oh, you know, I have the cash because I'm some, you know, I'm a Silicon Valley person and I got some stock or whatever it is, right? So they have the money. And then they say something like this. I just want a deal. I listen to Grant Cardone and he says, buy big units. Hmm. And I'm like, oh, you, you know, either A, you're going to get taken advantage of, which is horrible, or B, um, you know, you're not going to do anything. So I really like to hear investors say, you know what, I'm looking for a you know, I want to be as specific as possible, right? I'm looking for five to 20 units, preferably one story, peaked roof, mix of ones and twos, right? If they can start saying things like that, I know they're serious, right? right. And, you know, when they have that conversation, I'm all in. But if I hear something like, oh, just get me a deal. You're in the market. Just give me a deal. I'm like, time out. Yeah, you know, yeah, exactly. You're about to waste your money. No, they're, they're I mean, I, again, anybody listening to this, I'm not... Um saying don't do it absolutely yeah. it's the best in my opinion it's the best asset class oh, that no question. anyone can can enter into and you know that you can build like amazing wealth in a very short period of time if you can find deals that you could reposition yes. and um lower expenses raise the rents of course you know yeah. stabilize it and then turn that noi from you know 100 to 175 you know you start messing with cap rates you know yep. that seventy five thousand dollars in the commercial world is a significant amount of money um yeah. on the appraisal you know yeah, or yeah. The cap rate, right yeah so what, what just to try to put it in in or just to repeat it what matt's really highlighting here for you is how you make money with apartments or commercial units you're going to buy a building that's performing at a whatever a is then your job in general is to go in and improve A, right? You either, um, you know, you increase it by a hundred or two hundred dollars, and there's only two levers you have. You either go in and increase rent, so you increase top line, or you go in and you you add things that reduce expenses, right? Maybe right. you know, maybe the building for whatever reason the old owner was paying electricity and water. Maybe, maybe you can find a way to you know cost share that expense with the tenants and then remove that from your income statement thus making the building. There's just so many ways that you can adjust the NOI and then the NOI to the cap rate just gives you the valuation. So um, it's, it's a big deal, especially in changing markets uh, to, be, to be able to understand that. So uh, he, he's given you a lot of great stuff there. So let's talk about what you're doing nowadays, right? You, I see you, you're out, you're finding lots of value add op opportunities. What does that kind of look like? Give a feel for the team. Uh, why don't we talk a little bit about that? Sure. Yeah. I mean, I, uh, when I say I'm a business owner, I've structured my, my company to, uh, essentially my goal is to structure it so that it, it can be my, my cash flowing asset that will produce money to go buy other cash flowing assets. Awesome. Um, you know, that's, that's the structure I've put together. Um, you know, we're in the, we're in the, infancy of that. Uh, like yeah. I said, the challenges are finding the right, team members and the right people to fit that model. Yeah. Um, you know, and so right now I've got, um, three acquisition guys. I've got, I'm still in the disposition seat. So what sure. that means to you guys is a deal comes in. Um, I don't speak to sellers. I don't look at properties. I don't, I'm not on the phone negotiating. I'm not writing contracts. My guys are out doing that. Awesome. We'll bring the contract packed in they mo most of them have an idea of where we need to be on a specific deal if that if not they're running it by me and then when the deal comes in it's then my responsibility to determine what our strategy is are we going to wholesale it yeah are we going to fix and flip it are we going to get a jv partner yep. and do something on that end or am i going to hold it as a rental awesome. so we have different strategies of course that um we we can uh, execute Mm -hmm. uh you know i'm a, at the at the end of the day i've 
built my business through wholesaling. Sure. So I'm partial to wholesaling because I, I've done all of the different avenues, um, mostly fix and flip, um, being the, the secondary choice at this time. Sure. And, you know, I, I prefer the wholesale route. It's yeah. just, it fits kind of where I like to be, but I do, I have uh, flips going on yeah. at the moment. No, I, I think that's great. I mean, um, you know, two things are great about that. First, you know what you're uniquely good at and what the visit, what, what the, what the job entails. And if wholesaling is, it's great. Shortest amount of time, quickest time to dollar time value money is awesome. Right. Uh, the ability to afford three acquisition people is huge, right? Cause that's not cheap. Um, right. so you're, um, you know, you're doing big things and the fact that you know that you have to add other streams cause every deal you have different options for is awesome. And then, as you said, I think right out of the gate, um, all of that stuff is just income. But what you're doing now is you're looking to add wealth through acquisition, buy and hold, wh whatever you want to call that. That's, yeah. that's just going to set you up to be so much more comfortable in the next cycles, which I've right. seen in my videos, I think, is just starting. Um, yes. So it, it's, uh, it, it's a Definitely. great idea. We actually, I spoke with one of my private lenders yesterday. And she's in, uh, she's in the mortgage industry. So I always talk to her like, Hey, how are the applications looking? You know, yeah. what, you know, well, you know, they're down because of the holiday season, but she says they're down in, in an extra 35 to 40% on top of the normal holiday yeah. slow seasonality. Yeah. Yeah. It's even more. Yeah. And what really struck me and I didn't realize this, but she's like, we're actually getting resumes from people in the industry because their companies are starting to, to lay off. Yeah, that's going to happen in the banking industry. The big banks, you know, they, I don't know, they probably had a five or six year run where interest rates are in the threes and fours doing all kinds of just refinancing. When interest rates spike a point, game over, right? So that yeah. part of the business is going to be, it's going to be slow to a trickle for five years, easy. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, I, we're, we are, we, the economy is about to go through a hiccup, right? The uh, the yield curve just inverted. I talked about that yesterday. It's it's about to get uncomfortable. But, um, you know, we, we both, you know, unlike a lot of people I've talked to, you and I have been through that cycle in 08, right? Right. So, uh, right. We, kind of, we kind of know know where the sharp edges are and the things to stay away from. We know, as you said earlier, you know what? We need a, li a little bit cheaper on our acquisition side because our hold yeah. times are longer. Our cost of money is going to be a little bit more. So, you know, let's whack five or 10% off and just, just have that extra layer of comfort. So you're doing all the right things, which is awesome. Let, let's sort of wrap this up and let's talk about the future. Can you, have you even thought about what you or your company would look like in three to five years, what, what you'll be doing? Yeah. I mean, I think, um, you know, eventually I will, uh, replace myself ah. on the disposition side. Okay. Um, so, you know, I don't think my company needs to have, um, a ton of bodies. I think, we're, we're probably pretty solid at three acquisition, uh, a disposition guy, uh, transaction coordinator. Yes. And, then, um, uh, a kind of a COO, uh, running the marketing and, and checking and making sure, you know, we're, our, our KPIs are in line, yeah. you know, we're, you know, our, what our marketing budget looks like, what our marketing, uh, strategy is. And, um, you know, like I already take a paycheck from my company. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of separated my mat from the LLC, yep. uh, which was a, you know, it was an interesting move. Uh, Cause you know, I treated my, as we all do when we start kind of treated my business account, like my piggy bank. Yeah, of course. You know? And Hey, I need some money. I'll just take, so now I'm, I've, I've kind of like, okay, I'm getting a paycheck regardless if we do zero deals or, or 10, right. uh, I'm getting paid. And so the goal is to, you know, to grow that piece so that, you know, when I am, you know, I'll be 40 in March. So oh, you're time, just a young pup. Oh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> my wife says the beard makes me look older. But, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, you know, uh, that, that's the, that's the, the goal to, you know, replace myself, but I don't know how far I'll go, Michael, because yeah. I don't, I don't know what else I would do. I love, I yeah. love real estate. I love, you know, talking with guys like yourself and, and, and my buyers, I have great relationships with my buyers. We, we go to lunch, we hang out, we go to ball games together. Yeah. So it's like, kind of like, these are my friends, you know? Right. And so 
I don't know. Um, yeah, I can tell you something. So I think this is what's going to happen, right? And again, one guy's opinion, so whatever. Uh, I think you're going to spend the next two to three years getting your process and procedures in place so you can really be that, uh, that chairman or whatever you want to call it, the guy really above it all watching it. You're going to insert the disposition. You're going to get the COO. And then I think you're going to find that you want to move to the education route. You're kind of one of those natural, you know, lean forward, positive people follow you. Uh, kind of guy. I, I could see you, um, you know, adding another income stream in education. I, I think that's coming your way. I, I think you've sort of dabbled in it in the past, if I, if my history is right, but uh, uh, I think that's coming. Well, I, I appreciate that. Thank you. And um, yeah, you know, that's definitely something that, um, you know, has been on my mind. Um, yeah. I, I have done a couple events and I really enjoyed them. Mm-hmm. Um, but, I, you know, I'm the type of guy that will never uh, t- not tell it like it is. Yeah. So when, if I'm not in the right place and I'm not feeling good about my business and I, I would never go out and try to pitch someone something. So yeah. for me, it's very important to, to kind of get back to the basics, you know, yep. like you got to get back to the fundamentals. Right. And so I'm a big believer in fundamentals and you know, anybody out there that is kind of struggling, like get back to your, your core fundamentals and that'll yeah. lead you to the right, to right direction, you know? And so, I, 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 couldn't, yeah. I couldn't agree more. Um, one of the thing newbies and experienced guys suffer from is what I call the shiny object syndrome. Yeah. Right. And, and, and sometimes it happens really, you know, obviously the newbies are kind of easy, right? Hey, I'm going to wholesale. Then I'm going to hotel. Then I'm going to buy and hold. Then I'm going to fix and flip. Right. Then I'm going to buy notes and then I'm going to private lend. Yeah, <laughs> I get it. But the experienced guys like yourself, myself, we sometimes get to a point where our fundamentals are, I don't know, I guess I'll say boring to us, right? They're not mentally challenging anymore. Don't get me, right. they're working, right? They're bringing the deals in, but we're freaking bored. And exactly. we, need to, we need to self-select and go, you know what? That's okay, right? This, this, this stream is a good thing and not to your earlier point, sabotage ourselves yeah. uh, by looking for the next shiny object. So it's just this internal battle with, you know, type A competitive people that, that uh, sometimes we do, we, we hurt ourselves. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, you, you hit it right on the head. Uh, my mentor told me the same thing. Your business is designed to be boring. There you go. Don't go in and start breaking things and changing things because of that, uh, you know, that inferiority complex that we have or that Superman, we're, yeah. we're Superman, that Superman effect. Yeah. Well, I can do anything. I could change it. I could design it. I could, I could build it. I could restructure. No, like yeah. don't do that. Like, it's okay. Not, yeah, it's okay. And, and it's okay to give yourself credit and acknowledge where you, what, what you've accomplished. Yeah. It's okay to take a step back and say, I deserve this. Like yeah. I, I'm not done, but I'm, you know, I'm going to accept and, and be uh, happy for my growth and my accomplishments. Cause it's amazing. I'm a one percenter. Yeah. Let's keep moving the forward. And now how can I bring my team and, and each one of them, how can I show them the skills, give them the opportunities to grow? And like, that's, that's yeah. where it's at. That's awesome. So, so this has been a, this has been so much fun for me. I think the audience would have, would have gotten a lot from this, but I always want to close with kind of turning it over to you. Uh, this is going to be your section to sort of share anything you want from how to get a hold of you, uh, books you've read, topics you believe in, things you people got to do. You know, Matt, the floor is yours. Uh, say whatever you like. Thank you. Um, yeah, to reach me, uh, I'm on uh, social media, Facebook, Instagram. Uh, reach out to my name's Matt Garabedian. Um, my wife is named Guyane. So it's Matt Guyane Garabedian on Facebook. I have my own business uh, personal page. It's Phenom Investor on Facebook and then Phenom Investor on Instagram. Uh, you know, I, uh, or, you know, shoot me an email, Matt at Phenom, P-H-E-N-O-M, investor.com. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm available. I'm around if, if you're looking for structuring deals, helping, you know, you, you, gotta, you gotta deal enough money. You have money, but you don't have a deal. I mean, we can help you <laughs> either way. Uh, I'm looking for apartments now, uh, not at the prices they're selling for right now. <laughs> uh, if, uh, you guys have some apartment deals that, you know, are, are, they make sense. I, I'd love to hear about them. And, um, yeah, that's, that's pretty much what I've got. Um, yeah. You know, um, what else can I share? Um, yeah, just, you know, the, this business is a roller coaster. 
so I, I encourage you guys to and gals um, just take take stock of uh, yourself and and be okay with the ups and downs. Be okay with setbacks. Um, I heard a guy say something that was awesome. He said, um, "You you have to go through a test in order to have a testimony." Oh, and uh, like that. that resonated with me quite a bit, right? We all have a testimony where we started, where we came from, where we're at, but we had to go through tests. So if you're, if you're not going through it, if you're not going through those tests and that adversity and the challenges, you're not doing enough. Yeah. You know, you're fooling yourself. And cool. so accept and embrace that, figure it out. It's going to be okay. You're going to get through it. You're going to grow. And um, it took me, you know, quite a while to, to accept that because I always felt, why is this happening to me? Why do I have all these challenges? Why do I have all these issues? You know, why do I feel like this? You know, and, and normal. So if anybody's going through that and uh, wants to talk it out, hit me up. I, I have a little bit of insight now and I can <laughs> kind of show you, hey, I went through this. I, I, I feel you. <laughs> That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for doing this. Just hold tight. Let me, uh, let me stop this recording and, and we'll catch up real quick. Thank okay. you everyone for watching. Have a great day.